John 1 verse 1 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1 verse 1 presents the crucial meaning that Jesus Christ is the Word or Logos, who existed with God the Father from the beginning. This verse emphatically states that Jesus Christ has been with God and is God himself. John 1 verse 2 The same was in the beginning with God. This verse reaffirms that Jesus Christ was with God from the very beginning, establishing the eternal relationship between Jesus and the Father. John 1 verse 3 All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. This verse declares that Jesus Christ is the creator of all things. He is the power behind the creation of the universe, and nothing exists without his involvement. John 1 verse 4 in him was life, and the life was the light of men. This verse states that true life is found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. He is the spiritual light that guides humanity out of darkness. John 1 verse 5 And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This verse depicts the victory of light over darkness. Jesus Christ as the light of the world cannot be overcome by the darkness of sin and evil. John 1 verse 6 There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. This verse introduces John the Baptist, a prophet sent by God to proclaim the coming of the Messiah. John 1 verse 7 The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. John the Baptist came as a witness to testify about the light, so that through his testimony, all people might believe in Jesus Christ. John 1 verse 8 He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. This verse clarifies that John the Baptist was not the light himself but was sent to testify about the true light, which is Jesus Christ. John 1 verse 9 That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. This verse proclaims Jesus Christ as the true light, who enlightens every person that comes into the world, offering them the opportunity to know and follow him. John 1 verse 10 He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. This verse highlights that even though Jesus Christ was in the world and played a significant role in its creation, many people did not recognize or acknowledge him as the Messiah. John 1 verse 11 he came unto his own, and his own received him not. This verse reveals that Jesus Christ came to his own people, the Jews, but they did not receive him or accept him as their Savior and King. John 1 verse 12 But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. This verse declares that those who receive and believe in Jesus Christ are granted the privilege to become children of God, experiencing a new spiritual birth and entering into a relationship with the Heavenly Father. John 1 verse 13 Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This verse explains that the spiritual birth into God's family is not a result of human lineage or human effort but is a divine act of God's grace. John 1 verse 14 And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This verse describes the incarnation of the Word, Jesus Christ, who took on human flesh and lived among humanity. He revealed his divine glory, being the only Son of the Father, and displayed grace and truth in abundance. John 1 verse 15 John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. John the Baptist bore witness of Jesus, proclaiming that Jesus, who came after him, is preferred before him because he existed before John. John 1 verse 16 And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. This verse speaks of the abundance of grace that comes from Jesus Christ. Through him, all believers receive grace upon grace, an unending supply of divine favor and blessings. John 1 verse 17 For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. 
This verse contrasts the law given through Moses with the grace and truth that came through Jesus Christ. Jesus fulfilled the law and brought a new covenant of grace and truth to humanity. John 1 verse 18 No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. This verse affirms that no one has seen God directly, but the unique and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who is close to the Father's heart, has made God known to humanity. John 1 verse 19 and this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? This verse introduces the record of John the Baptist when Jewish religious authorities sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to inquire about his identity. John 1 verse 20 And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. John the Baptist openly confessed that he was not the Messiah and did not deny his true identity. John 1 verse 21 And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. The priests and Levites asked if John the Baptist was Elijah or the prophet foretold in the Old Testament. However, he denied being either of them. John 1 verse 22 Then said they unto him, Who art thou? that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? The religious authorities persisted in asking John the Baptist about his identity, seeking an answer to take back to those who sent them. John 1 verse 23 He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. John the Baptist declared himself as the voice crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord, just as the prophet Isaiah had foretold. John 1 verse 24 And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. The messengers sent to inquire of John the Baptist were Pharisees, a prominent Jewish sect known for their strict adherence to religious laws. John 1 verse 25 And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? The Pharisees questioned John the Baptist regarding his authority to baptize if he was not the Christ, Elijah, or the prophet. John 1 verse 26 John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, whom ye know not. John the Baptist explained that he baptized with water, but among the people stood one whom they did not recognize. John 1 verse 27 He it is, who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes lack chet I am not worthy to unloose. John the Baptist declared that the one coming after him, Jesus Christ, is preferred before him, and he humbly acknowledged that he was unworthy even to untie the straps of Jesus' sandals. John 1 verse 28 These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. These events took place in Bethabara beyond the Jordan River, where John the Baptist was baptizing people. John 1 verse 29 The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The following day, John the Baptist saw Jesus approaching and proclaimed him as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John 1 verse 30 This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. John the Baptist reaffirmed that Jesus is the one he had spoken of previously, the man who is preferred before him because he existed before John. John 1 verse 31 And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. John the Baptist admitted that he did not know Jesus personally, but he came baptizing with water so that Jesus might be revealed to Israel. John 1 verse 32 And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. John the Baptist bore witness that he saw the Holy Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and remaining upon Jesus. John 1 verse 33 And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, 
the same as he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist reiterated that he did not recognize Jesus beforehand. However, the one who sent him to baptize with water told him that the one upon whom the Holy Spirit descends and remains is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. John 1 verse 34 And I saw, and bear record that this is the Son of God. John the Baptist testified that he saw the Holy Spirit descend upon Jesus and affirmed that Jesus is the Son of God. John 1 verse 35 Again, the next day after, John stood, and two of his disciples. The day after John the Baptist had borne witness to Jesus as the Son of God, he stood again with two of his disciples. John 1 verse 36 And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. When John the Baptist saw Jesus passing by, he pointed to him and declared, Behold the Lamb of God. John 1 verse 37 And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Upon hearing John the Baptist's testimony about Jesus, the two disciples left John and began following Jesus. John 1 verse 38 Then Jesus turned, and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? Jesus noticed the disciples following him and asked what they were seeking. They respectfully addressed him as Rabbi, meaning, Master, and inquired where he dwelled. John 1 verse 39 He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Jesus invited them to come and see where he lived, and they spent the day with him, staying with him until about the tenth hour, 4 p.m. John 1 verse 40 One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. One of the disciples who had followed John the Baptist and then started following Jesus was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. John 1 verse 41 He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Meshes, which is, being interpreted, the Christ. Andrew first found his brother Simon Peter and told him that they had found the Messiah, which means, the Christ. John 1 verse 42 And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation, a stone. Andrew brought Simon Peter to Jesus. When Jesus saw Simon Peter, he declared his true identity as Simon the son of Jonah and prophesied that he would be called Cephas, which means, a stone, or, Peter, in Aramaic. John 1 verse 43 The day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. The next day, Jesus went to Galilee and found Philip, calling him to follow him as his disciple. John 1 verse 44 now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip was from Bethsaida, the same city as Andrew and Peter. John 1 verse 45 Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law, and the prophets, did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Philip found Nathanael and told him that they had found the one whom Moses and the prophets wrote about, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. John 1 verse 46 And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Nathanael questioned whether anything good could come from Nazareth. Philip invited him to come and see for himself. John 1 verse 47 Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. As Nathanael approached Jesus, Jesus observed that he was a true Israelite, a man without deceit. John 1 verse 48 Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael asked Jesus how he knew him, and Jesus replied that he saw him under the fig tree even before Philip called him. John 1 verse 49 
Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Upon realizing that Jesus knew him intimately, Nathanael acknowledged Jesus as the Son of God and the King of Israel. John 1 verse 50 Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Jesus confirmed Nathanael's faith and assured him that he would witness even greater miracles and divine manifestations. John 1 verse 51 and he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus solemnly declared to Nathanael that he would see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man, signifying his divine authority and his connection between heaven and earth.